Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today in this uh, new tutorial from the Electronics from Zero to Infinity series, we will talk about how to calibrate our measurement devices or more precisely how to calibrate our multimeters that uh, measure volts, ohms and amperes. In any electronics lab, whether professional, semi-professional or just a hobbyist lab, there are uh, of course various multimeters that we use to measure whatever we need to measure. If we had the money to buy um, more expensive um, multimeters from uh, well-known brands, it is very possible that those multimeters have come uh, already calibrated from the factory. There are also um, high-quality brands like Fluke that um, on top of that they give uh, also the possibility to send back your multimeter to one of their facilities and they will perform various checks and recalibrate it if needed. However, it's most likely that most of us um, don't really have such multimeters and don't work only with high quality multimeters because they cost quite a lot. It is most likely that, uh, like me, you have, um, let's say, medium price, medium quality multimeters and also possibly even cheap multimeters. Now, cheap multimeters are good enough for most of what we do and uh, we, we can work with them, it's not a problem. However, um, there is a clear necessity for us to be able to calibrate these multimeters. First of all, because we don't know how well they were adjusted in the factory before um, they were packed and shipped and before we could buy them and second because as time passes we want to make sure that they still read values correctly now when i needed to do this procedure myself first of all i started to search on youtube for videos about this topic and honestly i thought that i will find plenty of them sadly that was not the case I um, found only a handful of videos that um, apparently were either um, showing us how to calibrate cheap multimeters from more expensive multimeters like Fluke, and Agilent, Bryman, etc. which obviously makes the assumption that we have such an expensive multimeter in the first place. Or another kind of videos that I found was um, the kind that was showing how to calibrate a multimeter based on a professional calibration device. One of those devices that cost thousands of euros or dollars. Now it's pretty clear why either of these videos don't really help us. It is most most likely that we don't have and we cannot have such a multi thousand dollar equipment and it's also most likely that we don't really have um, a friend or um, someone that we know that has such a device so that we can just go to him and uh, ask him to calibrate ours. It is most likely that we find ourselves in a situation where we have uh, cheap multimeters and uh, medium price multimeters and we just want to make sure that they read of values that are as close as the truth as possible, as accurate as possible. So obviously we need to have um, solutions that are within reach. And yes, fortunately we can find decent solutions that are also relatively cheap. We don't really need to spend a lot of money on uh, a project like this. So now before we delve into today's uh, tutorial and before I start showing you the solution that I'm proposing, um, we need to state clearly what exactly we can calibrate and how. Because uh, right now I'm not gonna show you a solution to calibrate um, reading uh, farads for example or hertz or uh, values like these, units like these. We can easily calibrate volts because there are various um, integrated circuits or modules that give us a fixed uh, reference voltage with a uh, high accuracy. We could calibrate ohms because uh, we could build ourselves a relatively high precision resistor from a um, special kind of wire. And if we, if we have um, a multimeter that has uh, calibrated volts and ohms, we can also uh, calibrate indirectly amperes because if we apply a certain known 
voltage to a resistor that also has a very known value with uh, low tolerances, both of them, then a certain current will obviously flow through this resistor. And if we know with a decent precision what voltage we applied and what ohms does that resistor have, then we indirectly know what current is passing through this resistor. So we could this way calibrate um, amps as well. Quickly before I uh, go to show you the schematics for um, calibrating the volts, I need to make a few specifications. First of all, this project uh, I consider it to be uh, easy level, so um, I consider that uh, most people should be able to build this. Also, the skills that you need um, are theoretically quite low. You will need to be able to solder a few components, either within themselves or on a PCB. You will need to be able to build yourself a small case. A simple plastic case will be just fine. And as far as the costs is concerned, um, the cost of building this will be quite low. The estimated price will be around uh, 32 dollars or 30 euros, somewhere around there, for all the components that you will need. Alright, so let's delve into this schematic of this device that I'm proposing here. Now, the solution that I've come up with uh, actually contains three mm, smaller solutions packed up together. You won't need to use all three of them, you just need to try to find the best solution out of these three and uh, just go with the best of them. I've made myself a small PCB with all three of them just so that I can uh, show them and just so that I can test them and see differences and stuff like that. So the best way we could to get a reference voltage or actually two of them would be to use uh, an Adafruit uh, 2200 uh, Precision LM4040 voltage reference breakout box. It's uh, an Adafruit uh, product uh, 2200. I'm pretty sure you can find it in various um, stores, local stores around you. And of course you can also uh, order it online. Now these precision voltage references, uh, they give two voltages, 2.048 volts and 4.096 volts with a 0.1% uh, precision, like it says here on this uh, image. And they are pretty good. Um, they have also posted a couple of uh, images of uh, a high precision uh, multimeter reading these values and they are quite, uh, quite good as we can see here. So using this module would be one of the preferred ways because it gets us um, a pretty high uh, accuracy. So what I've done is uh, I've bought uh, such a module and I've powered it from a 9 volt battery and of course I have these two voltages with 0.1% uh, precision and because these are quite low voltages and it, sometimes it happens that when we calibrate a, a measurement device in a relatively uh, small value, we may find out that um, the more we increase this value, the less precision this device has, because uh, precision does not uh, uh, stays linearly. We would also like to have a relatively higher voltage. And I figured that three times higher than 4.096 volts should be good enough, should be nice enough so that we can have a relatively low voltage and a relatively high voltage to be able to check our multimeters. So for this I've created uh, another um, circuit that gets powered by uh, another 9 volt battery placed in series with the first 9 volt battery so uh, it gets powered from a total of 18 volts and it's basically um, an amplifying um, operational amplifier that takes this 4.096 volts at its non-inverting input and uh, by having uh, two resistors um, 
that are um, set to very precise values and I will show you a bit later how to obtain these precise values. This operational amplifier basically multiplies whatever he uh, has on its input three times to its output. So by having a 100k resistor here, R1, and uh, an R2 that is um, it's going to be a um, semi-adjustable uh, resistor, um, a variable resistor, as you might call it. And we are going to adjust it to have a 200 kilo ohms value or any other value that is precisely twice as big as uh, R1. Then this operational amplifier will simply triple the voltage at the input and should give us 12.288 volts. Now, of course, when we will adjust R2 to have twice the R1 value, no matter how accurate we are, we will also um, we will in introduce an error anyway, because um, we can't just uh, have 100% precision. So I have calculated that uh, in my case, the error is about 0.4%. So if we add 0.4% uh, to this existing 0.1%, we get this error of 0.5%. Uh, so the precision of this 12.288 volt output will be around 0.5%. Of course, it's, uh, it's worse than 0.1%, but still it is somewhat better than the other options that we have. By the way, for the operational amplifier, I've chosen a TL061, but um, in principle, you can um, you can choose any other operational amplifier. It doesn't matter that much. You should uh, theoretically get the same result. Now, like I've said, this is the preferred way of obtaining a voltage reference because Adafruit uh, module uses... Um, LM4040, not just any kind of 4040, but actually 4040A, as we can see here in this uh, image that they've posted. The, the module uses two of these uh, integrated circuits, LM4040 AIM3-2.0, which gives us a 2.048 volts. And another one, LM4040 AIM3-4.1, which gives us that uh, 4.096 volts. Now, the first letter immediately after 4040 is very, very important. Uh, because this uh, integrated circuit comes in five versions, uh, from letters A through E. A is the highest precision one, E is the lowest precision one. And if we check uh, the data sheet, we can find here that we have, um, like I said, A is the highest precision, plus minus 0.1%. B is a lower precision, 0.2%. C, 0.5%. D, 1%. And E is the worst IC from this group, plus minus 2%. It has the worst precision out of all of these five versions. So obviously, since the Adafruit module uh, uses the A version, it has a much better uh, precision than other solutions that we can come up with. Now, if for some reason we cannot find this module to buy, um, we could settle with buying another separate uh, integrated circuit, LM4040, of a lower precision. Obviously, if we could find LM4040A, it would give us the same good precision, just like the other fruit module. But, um, for example, in my case, in my country, searching on uh, local um, electronic components distributors, I have found that um, I just cannot get anything better than an LM4040D-10. This was the only integrated circuit in the LM4040 family that I could get. And uh, like I said, since it's D, it has a 1% precision. Maybe in your country you would be able to buy a higher precision one. Um, here I just couldn't get. 
So in case I couldn't find an Adafruit module, I would have uh, just bought this LM4040Ds and settled with a 1% um, precision. Now this integrated circuit is quite simple, it only needs a current limiting resistor, R3, which for 18 volts I've calculated to be 5.6K. And you just apply current to it and it will adjust the voltage across its pins so that it stays at 10 volts plus minus 1%. So that's exactly what we would do. We would have this uh, resistor in series with an uh, integrated circuit and we would have um, a wire connected to the output so that we can read the voltage across it. Of course, this, like I said, it's a 1% precision, which means it's far worse than uh, anything other like Adafruit module but it's still a bit better than the third option that we would have if we wouldn't be able to buy this uh, integrated circuit uh, as well then all that I think uh, is left for us is to rely on uh, simple Zener diodes now that's pretty much the worst possible solution because Zener diodes are not that precise and they also uh, vary quite a lot with temperature but if we like I said if we cannot get another fruit module or any other module that's similar to this if we cannot get an LM4040 or a similar uh, integrated circuit with a relatively nice precision, then it's better than nothing to use a, a few Zener diodes. And what I've done is, um, of course, we don't want to rely on a single Zener diode. We want to have more of them and we want to basically create a mathematical average of each voltage that each um, diode gives. So this is uh, what I've done. I've basically taken four of uh, these Zener diodes. I've used the uh, BZX55C 13 volt uh, diodes. Of course, you can use uh, any other model of Zener diodes with any other voltage. Um, of course, you will need to take care of uh, not using a voltage that's too close or higher than the voltage that you uh, supply uh, the whole circuit with. So since I used two 9 volt batteries, um, 13 volts is a nice value, but I wouldn't get higher than maybe 15 volts because you still need some, uh, some extra voltage for the current uh, limiting resistor. I chose 13 volts because I, I thought it's a, it's a nice value to have. So I've taken four of these diodes. Um, I've calculated that this uh, current limiting resistor should be around 600 ohms or something like that. I've used 560 ohms uh, resistors. Um, I handpicked four of these 560 ohms resistor to have uh, exactly the same value. So basically I recommend you buy um, several of these resistors. They are very cheap so you can buy tens of them literally and just uh, use a multimeter to measure um, the resistance and pick four resistors that are very very close to each other ideally identical and it doesn't really matter that uh, your multimeter is not yet calibrated it matters less what matters is that all of these should have the same value whether it's smaller or higher it's less important it's important to have the same value exactly the same value so basically I've um, cascaded four of these um, stages with a 560 ohm resistor and a 13 volt uh, Zener diode. And I've taken each of their um, output voltage, so each voltage on uh, their um, pins and I've put them through a um, higher resistor, this R4, 6, 8 and 10. Uh, which is, um, well, for me it was 3.3k. Um, I've used this value because it's less used in other circuits. So um, I have more of them. Um, this value is not that critical, but it should be relatively high. It, it should be way above 1k. And also uh, the value of these four resistors should be identical or as close as possible. So you should also handpick these resistors. Now, if we connect them like this, if we connect each stage uh, through uh, another 3.3K resistor and all of these resistors on the other side, we connect them together, 
Then on this point, we will have the mathematical arithmetic um, average of all of these uh, voltages across each Zener diode. And I've chosen to do this because um, it's better to have an average of several diodes rather than rely on only one of them. And I will show you immediately why, because it happens that maybe you get a few diodes that are relatively close to each other, but one of them can get you a pretty high or pretty low value compared to the others. So if you would use that as a single diode, you would get a pretty bad uh, precision, even worse than it already is. So it's better to, to cascade more of these stages and create an average of them rather than rely on only one of them. And of course, the more stages you would cascade, the more um, precision, the, maybe not the higher precision would be, but the more you would get closer to reality, to um, what that voltage actually is. So, um, in order to understand why I've written that this uh, solution has a 6.5% precision, we would uh, need to take a look in the data sheet of this uh, Zener diode and we would see that uh, we have um, an output voltage, a minimum and a maximum one. And as far as the 13 volt um, Zener diode is concerned, it says that it gives us between 12.4 and 14.1 volts. And that's quite a big uh, range. So basically, if we calculate the difference, that's 14.1 minus 12.4, that's 1.7 volts, right? If we want to know what 1.7 means relative to 13, multiply by 100 divided by 13, and we get uh, basically a 13.076%, okay? So if we divide this by two, because precision is uh, um, expressed in plus minus values, we get this 6.5%. So basically the manufacturer states that any Zener diode is giving this rated voltage with a 6.5% tolerance. This is quite high. I mean, 6.5% is quite a lot, but still it could prove to be useful, like I said, if we cannot get a precision integrated circuit or a voltage reference module, it could prove to be useful because we might find out that some multimeters are actually worse than 6.5% and they, they are off by a lot more. So even using uh, such a low precision uh, solution, it could prove to be better than just not using any at all and just relying on whatever our multimeters uh, show us. And um, before I finish uh, this schematic presentation, um, in order to show you why it's nice to have multiple um, Zener diodes cascaded, in my case, I have measured uh, mine and they gave me 13.11, 13.19, 13.76, and 13.17 volts. Now, as you can see, those 0 0.11, 0 0.19, 0 0.17 are quite close to each other. However, the third diode in this series gives us 13.76, which is considerably higher than every other diode. This is why we would uh, like to have an average instead of just relying on one. The mathematical average of these four values is 13.75. In practice, in my circuit, uh, I've seen that uh, I get 13.33 volts. It's not bad, it's not that far from the mathematical average, and it's definitely something that we can work with. And it's uh, also um, well within the 6.5% tolerance. Actually, those uh, 0 0.33 volts on top of 13 represent only 2.5% error so it's not that bad and it's not a lot worse than lm 4040d's okay so we've talked so far about how to obtain a relatively precise voltage 
Now let's see what we could do to obtain a relatively precise resistance. So the best thing that I thought of was that um, I could create myself um, resistance out made out of um, wire with a known um, resistance per meter. A wire that would uh, have a good... Um, thermal coefficient and such a wire is called uh, Cantal. So basically I um, bought myself a um, reel of Cantal wire of 0.9 millimeters diameter. This is the one I could uh, find locally and th this is a pretty good wire. It's mm, typically used in um, heating elements because uh, it can go up to 1300 degrees Celsius. But uh, besides that, it has a very good um, thermal coefficient, meaning its electrical resistance changes very, very little with the change of temperature. And this is important for us because we want to have a resistor with a relatively constant resistance, regardless of the temperature that we have surrounding us. So like I said, I bought uh, such a Cantal reel and... Um, on its label it says it has uh, 2.12 ohms per meter. That means that with less than 5 meters length of this wire, we can have a 10 ohm resistance. Which is great because we can uh, take it as a starting point and build with it uh, larger resistances, larger resistors. Now, what is also important is for us to know um, what kind of precision should we expect from such a resistance, uh, from such a resistor that we, we build ourselves. And for this, we need to perform a few calculations. Like I said, on the label of this uh, Cantal wire, it says it has 2.12 ohms per meter. However, this 2.12 ohms per meter value um, could actually be a rounded up value from another value that it's slightly lower or slightly higher. So we could uh, make uh, the assumption that um, the manufacturer of this wire did not want to uh, write too many decimals on the label. So uh, he just rounded up this value to only two decimals. Therefore, 2.12 ohms per meter could actually mean anywhere from 2.115 up to 2.1249, very, very close to 125. If it would be 125, then it would be rounded up to 2.13, but it's not, it's 2.12. So 2.12 can mean anywhere between 2.115 to 2.1249, okay? The difference between these two values is of 0 0.01 ohms. So first we have this potential difference. We don't know if it is or if it's not, but we have to assume that the manufacturer just uh, rounded up this number and in reality the wire doesn't have 2.12 ohms per meter precisely but slightly lower or slightly higher. So this is one potential source of error. Another potential source of error could be the length at which we cut this wire. Now, in order to have a 10 ohms resistor, we need to cut 4717 millimeters of this wire. Personally, I've done my best to do so. However, it's quite impossible to be this precise. I estimate that I've introduced an error of plus minus 10 uh, of 10 millimeters in total plus minus 5 so basically 5 millimeters at one end 5 millimeters at the other end I would say it's a it's a decent human error that it's uh, plausible so we have to take it into account plus minus 5 millimeters means that my wire can be anywhere between 4712 millimeters up to 4722 millimeters if we take these two um, parameters into account and we calculate what is the resistance of the wire in both uh, extremes we get that um, in the lowest case we can have a 9.96588 ohms resistor and uh, worst case scenario in the upper limit we may have a 10.0337778 ohms the difference between these is uh, basically 0 0.0678 
and so on ohms. If we um, calculate how much this means compared to 10 ohms, we get an approximate value of 0.68%. So basically this is the precision that uh, we get for this particular resistor. When we build this resistor, we will have a 10 ohms resistor of approximately 0.68% precision. Okay, now that we have obtained uh, one single resistor of 10 ohms value, since uh, it's a bit low, we want to obtain uh, several others of a higher value, but preferably also as precise as possible. For this, we will use um, semi-adjustable um, resistors or variable resistors, as you may call them, and uh, we will use a technique to set them such that they have exactly 10 times more than a predefined well-known resistor. So at first we will use the 10 ohm resistor to obtain a 100 ohm variable resistor. Then we will use the 100 ohm resistor to obtain a 1 kilo ohm resistor and later one that has 10 kilo ohm resistance based on the one that has 1 kilo ohm resistance. So the way you do this is quite easy. You place in series this 10 ohm resistor which we know it's 10 ohm and we know it has a 0.68% precision so it's quite good and we, we place it in series with a um, variable resistor that can have a 100 ohm value. Now the maximum value of this variable resistor doesn't matter that much. I used a 250 ohm variable resistor. What matters is that um, you need to be able to adjust this one to have precisely 100 ohms. So um, preferably don't take a 100 ohm variable resistor because you might have the bad surprise of finding out that actually its maximum value is less than 100 ohms. So no matter how hard you try to adjust it, you will never be able to reach 100 because it's above what it can do. So just choose something uh, uh, above the value that you want. For example, 150, 200, 250 ohms for this 100 ohms. Uh, that would be good enough. So, um, the method is quite simple. Uh, we will use the fact that if we apply a voltage uh, to both of these resistors placed in series, um, we will have a voltage drop across each of them. And if the variable one has 100 ohms and the fixed one has 10 ohms, then the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor will be exactly 1 11th of uh, the entire voltage applied to both of them. It's a simple uh, ohms law rule. So basically uh, you can do this with a 1.5 volt battery or uh, with uh, uh, any other power supply. I recommend uh, using a power supply that can go a little below 2 volts so that you will use um, the 2 volt range of a uh, multimeter. This way uh, you will see values with a 1 millivolt resolution, which will be, I think, in my opinion, it will be the best. Also, you will want to use a power supply that is um, very, very stable. You will not want to use a power supply that varies its uh, output voltage, because any variation will um, make it really 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 hard to um, perform this operation. In my case I used the power supply, I've set it to 1.868 volts. Uh, it's not uh, it's nothing uh, very very special, it's just a voltage that I uh, was able to easily obtain, uh, adjust. It can be any be lower than 2 volts, like I said. Now, if we calculate uh, what is the 1 11th part of 1.868, we get that it's 170 millivolts. So basically we apply this voltage and we adjust the um, semi-adjustable semi uh, resistor while measuring the voltage across um, the well-known resistor and we stop when um, we get 170 millivolts. Of course we move back and forth between the full voltage and the voltage only across this um, reference resistor 
so that we make sure that the power supply hasn't changed its uh, voltage. So in this particular case, when we have obtained 170 millivolts for this 10 ohm resistor, we know for sure that uh, the semi-adjustable is 100 ohms due to this simple ohms law and simple mathematics. And this is how we obtain a 100 ohm resistance. Now for the rest of them, you perform exactly the same operations. You remove R1 10 ohms from the circuit. You move R2, which has 100 ohms right now, down. And you, you will um, take it as the reference resistor. You will place a semi-resistor that can go uh, around 1 kilo ohm up. You will apply the same voltage. You might see that um, the voltage is slightly higher because the resistance is uh, also higher and some power supplies tend to um, vary their output voltage uh, when you uh, change the load, basically. That's not a problem, just measure the voltage applied to both of them, calculate uh, what it means uh, 1 over 11 times that voltage and perform the same operations. Adjust R2 until, in this particular case, um, it will have 1 kilo ohm when the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor will be 170 millivolts. Or, like I said, 1 11th part of the entire uh, voltage supplied. And this is how you will get the 1 kilo ohm resistor and then you do exactly the same thing for the 10 kilo ohm resistor. You move out the 100 ohm one, you move down the 1 kilo ohm one and uh, you place the 10 kilo ohm um, variable resistor um, in the upper position. You measure the voltage across both of them, calculate 1 over 11 of this value and adjust uh, the 10 kilo ohm semi-adjustable until you obtain that um, small voltage across uh, R1, which in this case will be 1 kilo ohm. And then you will know for sure that R2 will have 10 kilo ohms. So in the end you sh should have um, the first 10 ohm resistor and another one of 100, another one of 1 kilo and another one of 10 kilo ohms. Now, in practice, I've seen that um, these operations um, basically add up a certain error because, um, let's face it, if we, if we measure voltage um, down to 1 millivolt, then we can be certain that we will have a plus minus 1 millivolt uh, error. And um, if we calculate 1 millivolt over 1 entire volt, or actually 2 entire volts, which is the maximum that we can read on a multimeter on this scale, we get a 0.05% error for this particular technique. Therefore, um, each resistor that we will obtain will have a 0.05% uh, precision less than the previous resistor. So if the 10 ohm resistor has a calculated 0.68% precision, the 100 ohm uh, resistor will have um, 0.73% uh, precision. The 1 kilo ohm resistor will have a 0.78% precision and uh, the 10 kilo ohm one will have a um, 0.83% precision. Overall they are uh, pretty decent for what we can do as amateurs and they will definitely help us check our multimeters, see how precise they can measure resistance and later we will use them to um, check and uh, possibly calibrate currents because like I've said earlier, if we have these uh, known resistance values and we also have a known voltage, then the current that passes through them is also known. So we can compare it with what multimeters are showing to us. By the way, uh, earlier when I uh, talked about uh, the voltage reference and that uh, particular circuit and I've shown you that I've built a small uh, amplifying circuit with an operational amplifier to get uh, three times uh, that four volt voltage and I've shown you that I'm using two resistors um, connected to the non-inverting uh, input of that uh, operational amplifier um, I've told you that uh, you need to have two very precise uh, resistors, you know. Um, well, this particular technique you will also use 
in order to obtain that um, precise uh, value of that um, semi-adjustable or variable resistor in there. So we basically will take one fixed resistor uh, and it, it doesn't matter um, how much off you will find it to be around 100 kilo ohms. It really doesn't matter. But um, you will you take a semi-adjustable one that can go uh, up to twice as much as the fixed one. And you will use the same technique shown uh, so far in order to set it to have twice the value. And the difference is that instead of uh, targeting a uh, 1 over 11 voltage across the fixed resistor, you will target uh, 1 over 3. So one third of the total voltage that you will apply to both of them uh, has to be found on the fixed resistor. And when you adjust the variable one so that the fixed one has one third of the total voltage, then you know that the variable one is exactly twice as large as the fixed one. Okay, now that we have um, seen how we can calibrate our multimeters for uh, reading volts correctly, and we have also obtained some decently precise uh, resistors, let's see now how we can calibrate uh, our multimeters for reading correctly the amps or at least checking them how correctly they are able to read them. The method is also fairly simple. We will use uh, the previously obtained resistors and we will also use a simple Ohm's law, which states that uh, when you uh, apply a certain voltage to a certain resistance, a certain current will be generated through that resistor and it's a simple uh, mathematical division to obtain that, uh, that uh, current. So basically we will take one by one each resistor that we've created. We will use a power supply to apply um, a certain voltage to it. Before that we will connect an ammeter in series with that resistor. And we will also use a voltmeter across that resistor to measure the voltage. For this particular uh, technique we need two different multimeters, one that is able to read the volts correctly, therefore one that has been calibrated, and one that will read the uh, amps, and therefore one that we uh, want to check and possibly calibrate for uh, reading currents correctly. So according to a simple Ohm's law, if we use the 10 ohm resistor and we apply a 10 volt uh, voltage across it and you need to be able to read 10 volts with the voltmeter across the resistor not 10 volts across the power supply itself uh, it's very possible that the power supply will give a little more than 10 volts because there's a certain voltage drop across the ammeters as well then in this particular case we will obtain a 1 amp current and something similar we can do for lower currents to test uh, multimeters for lower currents. If we use the same 10 ohm resistor and we apply a 1.5 volt uh, across it, then the current that flows through it, it will be 150 milliamps. If we keep this 1.5 volt across it but we change it and instead of a 10 ohm we put a 100 ohm resistor, then we will obtain a 15 milliamp current. For 1 kilo ohm we will obtain 1.5 milliamps and for a 10 kilo ohm resistor we will obtain 150 microamps. This is uh, the reason why I've chosen these values 10, 100, 1 kilo and 10 kilos because uh, they are values that can help us obtain um, a pretty wide range of currents. <laughs> Although initially I have um, thought of um, filming the entire calibration uh, process of my uh, two digital multimeters, I've uh, noticed that uh, this whole video has become quite long and on top of that the um, calibration process turned out to be pretty boring. More than that, I've been quite unpleasantly surprised to see that neither of these um, multimeters have um, semi-adjustable potentiometers for um, ohms or amps. Neither, uh, not even the Velleman one, which is a fairly decent multimeter that has a total of six uh, semi-adjustable potentiometers, 
Only one of them is for um, adjusting volts and mm, the other five are completely unknown. You cannot adjust uh, neither amps nor ohms with them. So I will simply show you um, quickly what voltages I get after adjusting them to prove that uh, this whole circuit works and works decent. And I'll also show you um, pictures of both these uh, multimeters in case you have them so that you know which one is the um, voltage adjust um, semi-adjustable potentiometer. Okay, so before we end this uh, pretty long tutorial on how to calibrate your multimeters, there's one more thing I would uh, like to show you, and that is um, the fact that besides this integrated circuit, there are others as well, and uh, it happens that I found out about one that it's even more precise than this LM4040A. It's a... Um, it's an integrated circuit made by Maxim Integrated Company and its code is MAX6126A-SOIC. It um, also gives, uh, if I understand correctly, 4.096 volts, but it has an accuracy of 0.02%. So that's basically five times better than this LM4040. And even if uh, this wouldn't be available, there are other two more, Max 6126B-SOIC and uh, Max 6126A-UMAX, which both have a precision of 0.06%. So that's almost twice as good as this 0.1% uh, LM4040. So it's nice to know that uh, such very high precision uh, integrated uh, circuits exist so that uh, if you by any chance have a possibility to buy them, they would give you an even better um, calibration experience. Last but not least, I want to show you um, the contents of uh, an archive that I will link in the description of this video you can download uh, this project along with um, everything it has and uh, i need to quickly explain a few things to you since uh, the files are named in uh, romanian i will not bother to translate them but they are pretty easy to understand what they are and i'll quickly show them to you right so there are a few images with um, what I've shown you. This is the schematic, electronic schematic in uh, uh, JPEG uh, format. So you can just open it with a, an image viewer. Um, PCB image with a, um, a PCB designed to uh, create this circuit. And this is uh, uh, mirrored for tro uh, toner transfer. There's also a uh, non-mirrored version, just as you would see it uh, with your very eyes. The silk screen, also two uh, image files, one in mirror for uh, toner transfer and one that you would see uh, with our very eyes. Um, a few KiCad uh, files, uh, pro the project, the schematic and the PCB. So if you have a KiCad uh, software package installed, you can uh, open them. Um, English.txt is a, a small text file that uh, explains basically each file what contains and uh, it's sort of like a Romanian to English translation. And uh, I also have a bunch of STL files, which are uh, 3D models of um, the box that I've created for this uh, device. I uh, just printed, um, 3D printed with a 3D printer um, the case. And um, of course, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just uh, create a plastic case out of whatever. Um, I use a 3D printer so that I can just uh, make it easier. And you have a... Um, file for the box itself you have a file for um, the lid and i've also um, tried to engrave the values in the lid now depends a lot on uh, what your um, 3d printer is uh, sadly mine was not able to um, properly print this and i had to abort uh, the print way before um, this lid was finished but uh, maybe you have a better chance at this 
I just uh, glued some um, labels and uh, I'm just fine with it. There are also two files uh, which give you plastic coils for uh, winding uh, the um, 10 ohm uh, resistance made with wire. And um, there are actually two files, one for ABS, which is right here. And I've created a separate one for um, PLA material, simply because I've seen that um, there are a few problems if you try to print the ABS version with PLA. And uh, I've created just a, a separate, uh, a separate, a different design for this uh, plastic coil so that you can wind your uh, wire on it. And that's pretty much it. A couple of things that I probably should mention. Um, one, on this box I have um, made uh, two small um, notches on the left side so I can um, leave out the two connectors for the 9 volt batteries. I don't want to just uh, block two 9 volt batteries inside because this device will be used very very rarely. So I have just glued two um, 9 volt battery connectors on the side of the plastic case and I've created two notches so that um, the wires can go through them. Also, um, this uh, plastic case is designed so that you will use um, M4 screws and nuts as uh, electrical connectors. So basically I've connected uh, each output wire to one M4 screw and these M4 screws go on the lid um, through each of those um, holes that I've uh, designed for this specific reason. Of course you are free to just choose whatever other design you wish. Maybe you wish some sort of uh, specialized connector. I've wanted to keep things simple and uh, I typically like uh, the idea of uh, a screw on which I just uh, clamp a uh, crocodile clamp for example for quick connection. Anyway thank you very much for uh, watching this tutorial. I know it's a uh, become quite long but uh, I feel like uh, I needed to explain uh, everything in great detail and give you as much um, information as I can. So thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you next time on a new tutorial. See ya!